Welcome again, beloved, to segment number seven, the change of the Sabbath. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for your love and your compassion. Guide us, O oh God, as we go forth into this study. Lord, it is not an easy one. It's heavy. And I pray, God, that you will do it through me to your glory. And may it go forth to set the captives free and to dispel all the darkness and delusion that is out there. And that man may realize the truth of your word and the truth that is in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Use me now, I pray. Keep away all distraction and disturbance. In Jesus' name, amen. The change of the Sabbath. There is in the Bible a divine command to observe the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath. Exodus 28 11. Since God's Sabbath commandment is so plain, why do so many who believe in the Bible keep an entirely different day from the one God mentioned in the commandments? This is truly a puzzling situation. Many claim the Sabbath was changed by Christ when he was crucified and that the new Sabbath was ended by the same event. We ought to know how the change was brought about. We can know that the Bible says concerning, we can know what the Bible says concerning this question on the Sabbath day. Read Psalms 119 verse 18. Psalms 119 verse 18 tells us, Psalms 119 verse 18, it mentions, Psalms 119 verse 18 mentions that, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Upon what facts does our duty to worship God depend? Whenever God makes a claim, to reverence and worship about the gods of the heathen, he usually cites evidence of his creative power. Psalms 95 verse 5 and Isaiah 40 verse 25 and 26. Psalms 95 verse 5. Psalms 95 verse 5 tells us, The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Isaiah 40 verse 25 tells us something else about God and his creative power. Isaiah 40 verse 25. To whom then will you link me? Or shall I be equal, say the Lord, say the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who had created these things, that bringeth out their house by number. He calleth them all by name, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. The Sabbath was the Sabbath as a memorial of creation keeps ever before us why worship is due to God. He is the creator and we are his creatures. Just as long as God as our creator continues to be a valid reason for divine worship, the Sabbath will remain as a memorial to that fact. Did Christ change the Sabbath? Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Did the disciples make the change from the seventh 
to the first from the seventh day to the first day of the week did this disciples make that change the Bible records them as always keeping the same seventh day Sabbath that the Jews observe read Acts 13 verse 14 you can see from Acts 13 14 and 42 and 44 from Acts 17 1 to 3 and Acts 18 verse 4 did God know that a power would arise that would claim the right to change his law if so how did he make this known in Daniel 7 25 and he shall think to speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and time and the dividing of time Daniel 7 verse 25 so God know aforehand that someone would attempt to make a change to make a breach in his law and he forewarned his people of this change and right now we see that this change has impacted Christendom and many are worshiping God on a day that he did not set aside to for that purpose Daniel was shown in vision a power that would arise called a little horn which as it came on the scene of action would pluck up by the roots three other powers in this little horn where eyes were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things read daniel 7 verse 8 this same horn made war with the saints daniel 7 21 daniel 7 verse 8 let's turn there isaiah jeremiah ezekiel daniel chapter 7 verse Daniel 7 as we read from verse 8 I consider the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold in his horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things Daniel 7 verse 21 I beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them so right here beloved we see the power that attempt to make change in God's law and did come about with that change what power is prepared is represented by the little horn in verse 25 of Daniel's of Daniel 7 the prophet was shown three characteristics of this power and the length of time it would be supreme it characterize it character its characteristics are one it would speak great words against God and blaspheme God okay to the Pope are given titles that belong only to the Godhead Pope Leo the 13th wrote we hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. In Ecclesiastical Letter, June 20, 1894, in the great Encyclical Letter of Pope Leo the Thirteenth, page 304, this judicial authority will even include the power to pardon sin the catholic encyclopedia volume 12 art pope 
page 265. The second identification of this power that Daniel saw, it would wear out God's people. Persecution, it would think to change times and laws, a disregard for God's authority. Third, the length of time allotted for this power to be supreme was a time and times and the dividing of time. This same period, beloved, of time is mentioned in Revelation 12, 14 and is mentioned in Revelation 12, verse 6. To be a, and this time is Revelation 12, 6, to be a thousand two hundred and three score days. Since this is a prophetic time, we each apply the principle of prophetic interpretation. Each day stands for one year. Ezekiel 4 verse 6. This power was to endure than for was to endure then for 1260 years. One score is 20. So three score is 60. 1260 years. This papacy the papacy fits every part of this prophecy. She arose to supremacy in AD 538 after destroying three Aryan powers, namely the Hurili, Hurili, the Vandals and the Ostrogoths. And she remained supreme for 1260 years until in 1798 her power was finally broken when General Bertia went to Rome and took the Pope prisoner. There was no Pope for two years even though another Pope was elected in 1800 yet she had been divested of her civil power and therefore from that day to this her power to persecute has not been restored John spoke of this same power having received a deadly wound in Revelation 13 verse 3 so does the papacy claim that it has power to change the law of God and in particular the right to change the Sabbath day? Let's see. We shall notice now the claims of the papacy. Question. Which is the Sabbath day? Answer. Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because of the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea, AD 336, transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. This is a statement by the one who they call Rev. Peter Geriman, CSSR. The Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, page 50, second edition, 1910. Question. Has the Catholic Church power to make any alterations in the commandments of God? Answer. Instead of the seventh day and other festivals appointed by the old law, the Church has prescribed the Sundays and holidays and holy days to be set apart for God's worship. And these are now obliged to keep in consequence of God's commandment instead of the ancient Sabbath. The right Rev, as they called him, Dr. Hmm, Chancellor, 
Catholic Christian Instructed, page 211. As we continue, beloved, it says, We Catholics then have priestly, have precisely the same authority for keeping Sunday holy instead of Saturday as we have for every other article of our creed, namely the authority of the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. 1 Timothy 3.15 Whereas you who are Protestants have really no authority for it, whatever, for there is no authority for it in the Bible, and you will not allow that there can be authority for it anywhere else. Both you and we do, in fact, follow tradition in this matter, but we follow it, believe in it, to be a part of God's word and the church to be it divinely appointed guardian and interpreter you follow it denouncing it all the time as a fallible and treacherous guide which often makes the commandments of God of none effect Clifton Tracks volume 4 article a question for all Bible Christians, page 15. Question and answer format again. Question, have you any other way of proving that the church has power to institute festivals or precepts? The answer, had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religious religions agree with her she could not have substituted the observance of saturday the first day of the week for the observance of she could not she could had she not have any authority she could not have substituted the observance of Sunday the first day of the week for the observance of Saturday the seventh day a change for which there is no scriptural authority this is from Rev Stephen Keenan a doctrinal catechism page 174 New York Edward Duigan and brothers 1851 question again by whom was it the Sabbath change answer by the governors of the church the apostle who also kept it was for Saint John was in the spirit on the Lord's day which was Sunday Apoch 1 10. Question How prove you that the church had power to command feast and holy days? Answer By the very act of changing the Sabbath into Sunday, which Protestants allow of, and therefore they fondly contradict themselves by keeping Sunday strictly and breaking most other feasts commanded by the same church. Question How prove you that how prove you that answer because by keeping Sunday they acknowledge the church's power to obtain feast and commandments then under the sin and by not keeping the rest of the feast by her commanded they again deny in fact the same power rev henry tuberville d d r c and abridgment of the christian doctrine page 58 new york edward duingian 
and the brothers approved 1833. How will a protestant answer this challenge? How would a protestant answer this challenge? You will tell me that Saturday was the Jewish Sabbath, but that the Christian Sabbath has been changed to Sunday. But by whom? Who has authority to change and express command of Almighty God? When God has spoken and said, Thou shalt keep holy the seventh day, who shall dare to say nay? Thou mayest work and do all manner of worldly business on the seventh day, but thou shalt keep holy the first day in its stead? This is a most important question which I know not how you can answer. You are a protestant and you profess to go by the Bible and the Bible only, and yet in so important a matter as the observance of one day in seven as a holy day, you are you go again the plain go against the plain letter of the Bible and put another day in the place of that day which the Bible has commanded the command to keep holy the seventh day is one of the ten commandments you believe that the other nine are still binding who gave you authority to tamper with the fourth if you are consistent with your own principles if you really follow the Bible and the Bible only you ought to be able to produce some portion of the New Testament in which the fourth commandment is expressly altered library of con of Christian doctrine why don't you keep holy the Sabbath day? Page 3 and page 4, London, Burns and Oates, R.C. And here is another challenge. The Catholic Church, for over 1,000 years before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of her divine mission, change the day from Saturday to Sunday. We say by virtue of her divine mission because he who called himself the Lord of the Sabbath endeavor her, endowed her rather with his own power to teach he that heareth you heareth me commanded all who believe in him to hear her under penalty of being placed with the heathen and publican and promised to be with her to the end of the world. She holds her charter as teacher from him, a charter as infallible as perpetual the Protestant world at its birth in the reformation of the 16th century found the christian sabbath too strongly entrenched to run counter to its existence it was therefore placed under the necessity of acquisition of acquisition in the agreement arrangement thus implying the church right to change the day for over 300 years the christian sabbath is therefore to this day the acknowledged offspring of the catholic church as spouse of the holy ghost without a word of remonstrance from the protestant world the catholic mirror Baltimore, September 23, 1893. Coming to the wire with this. Coming to the close with this, beloved. This is history. Do Protestants recognize the papal claims? And do they acknowledge them? 
Although the following writers kept Sunday for a variety of reasons, they acknowledged it as no biblical basis. As I come to the ending of this historical facts, they, the Catholics, allege the Sabbath change into Sunday, the Lord's Day. Contrary to the Decalogue, as it appears, neither is there any example more boasted of than the changing of the Sabbath day. Great, say they, is the power and authority of the church since it depends, it dispense with one of the Ten Commandments. Augsburg Confession, Art 28, Article 28. It is quite clear that however rigidly or devotedly we may spend Sunday, we are not keeping the Sabbath. The Sabbath was founded on a specific divine command. We can plead no such command for the obligation to observe Sunday. There is no, not a single sentence in the New Testament to suggest that we incur any penalty by violating the supposed sanctity of Sunday. R. W. Dale, M.A., Congregationalist, The Ten Commandments, page 106 and 107. London, Hodder and Stockton, 1871. There is no word, no hint in the New Testament about abstaining from work on Saturday Sunday into the rest of Sunday. No divine law enters the observance of Ash Wednesday or Lent stands upon exactly the same footing as the observance of Sunday. Canon Eton, Church of England, the Ten Commandments, page 62 and 63 and page 65. London, Tubert and Co., 1894. And where are we told in Scripture that we are to keep the first day at all? We are commanded to keep the seventh day, but we are nowhere commanded to keep the first day. The reason why we keep the first day of the week holy instead of the seventh is for the same reason that we observe many other things, not because the Bible but because the church has enforced not because the bible but because the church has in church has enjoined it rev isaac williams bd church of england plain sermon on the catechism volume 1 page 334 and page 336 London Rivington 1882 Beloved it is impossible to exhort such a sense from the words of the commandment seeing that the reason for which the commandment itself was originally given namely as a memorial of God's of God's having rested from the creation of the world cannot be transferred from the seventh day to the first nor can any new motive be substituted in its place whether the whether the resurrection of our Lord or any other without the sanction of a divine command the Christian Doctrine, Book 2, Chapter 7 in Prost, Works of John Milton, Volume 5, Page 70, London, Haringey, G. London, Henry G. Ball, 1853. Conclusion, beloved. The transition from the keeping of the Sabbath to the observance of Sunday 
was a gradual process beginning sometime before AD 150 and it continued for nearly some time before a from nearly three centuries so the transition from the keeping of the Sabbath to the transition from the keeping of the Sabbath to observance of Sunday was gradually process but was a gradual process beloved beginning sometime before AD 150 and it continued for nearly three centuries there was an attempt by some Christian to make clear they were not Jews hence they abandoned the Sabbath in favor of Sunday UCB Eusebius, one of the foremost church historians of the time, wrote in his commentary on Psalm 92, All things whatsoever it was duty to do on the Sabbath, these we have transferred to the Lord's day, as more appropriately belonging to it, because it was a precedence and is first in rank and more honorable than the Jewish Sabbath. The first official action of the Catholic Church in favor of Sunday was taken at the Council of Laodicea in the 4th century. However, the law which had to do with the observance of Sunday specified Judaizing, being like the Jews, as the reason for not keeping the Sabbath. Why did Sunday sacredness develop? First, it was an effort not to be like the Jews and thus avoid persecution. Second, as Rome grew into power, the power, as Rome grew into power, she put her influence on the side of Sunday rather than the Sabbath. Third, as a result of the Roman influence, Sunday was made a matter of church law as with many other unscriptural practices such as the worship of Mary, veneration of saints and angels, use of images in worship and also praying for the dead. What should I do about keeping the Sabbath? Allow God's word to give the answer. Read Acts 5.29. Let's turn to Acts 5.29. As we conclude. Acts 5 verse 29. Acts 5.29 beloved. As we conclude in this series this one is a bit longer than the others because i have to get to all these historical facts just bear with me beloved it says then peter and the other apostles answered and said we are to obey god rather than man we are to obey god rather than man so that's Acts 5.29, Joshua 24.15. What does Joshua 24.15 say to us, beloved? Joshua 24.15. Joshua 24.15 tells us. Beloved, as we conclude, Joshua 24, 15 says that, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Elohim. So, 1 Kings 18.21. Let's see as we close. 1 Kings 
first kings 18 21 this is elijah and elijah came unto all the people and said how long halt ye between two opinion if the lord be god follow him but if baal then follow him and the people answer him not a word as we close beloved final text isaiah 56 1 and 2 so that's isaiah 56 1 and 2 isaiah 56 1 and 2 beloved as we close Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Peace and good will to all men let us pray eternal God and our father we thank you Lord for your goodness your grace and your mercy we worship and adore you because you are worthy there is no God like you have your own sweet divine way O Lord in us and through us and forgive us our sins and wash us in your blood and save us O God in your kingdom when you shall come in Jesus name we pray Amen and Amen. Thank you.